There should be another one in here. In Oop, there he is. Nice. There That's he is, cool. big one. Oh, no. Sort of interesting. You gotta really let those, uh, that bait sit there for a while to get them to trigger them into biting, it seems. For sure. Ooh, come here, buddy. Because he's got a little bit of a chopper issues there. We'll get her back. There's, There's one. There's Boy, just one. soaking it. <laughs> I like the summers here, they're jumping. Yeah. <laughs> just soaking that jig on the bottom. You know, like Jim had mentioned that uh, a lot of guys do this with, with spinning equipment and it's a great, great way to, to do it because um, you just have really good control of the line. A lot of guys are comfortable with it, but fishing with bait casting equipment can be really fun too. Me personally, I just like fishing for bass with bait casting equipment, large mouth or on cover. I just think it's a, a fun way to do it. There's no right or wrong way to do it, but one thing that'll help you a lot is rod length. So. Just in fishing in general, a rule of thumb is the longer the rod, of course, the further you can cast, but you lose accuracy. So a shorter rod provides more accuracy. So we're basically fishing with six foot eight to seven foot rods for this particular application. Right now, I'm throwing a jig on a rod that's designed to skip jigs under docks. This is St. Croix Dock Skipper. It's a seven foot heavy power, fast action. So. What that allows me to do is be really accurate. If, they've got, if I was fishing a 7.4 or 7.6, it's hard for me to get that roll cast under those docks. So rod link can make a big difference on casting accuracy. So shorter rods generally in this situation are much better. Whoa, perfect. I'll take that all day long. That was just the perfect clunk. <laughs>